Hi, I'm David Hartley. I work for uh, Qualcomm's system security architecture team. And I want to uh, talk about using confidential compute with SOC peripherals. And by SOC peripherals, yeah, by SOC peripherals, what I mean is peripherals that are on the same chip as the CPU, that are not connected externally via some PCIe link, and that are not even looking like PCIe peripherals on the chip. So they're not integrated endpoints in any way. They're just raw SOC peripherals. And these have some advantages. Um, you can have on-chip security access controls that can help with isolation, that can ensure that your connections are secure. You can optimize things because you have more flexibility with the on-chip interfaces. You can have multiple DMA streams. You can connect with interfaces to other peripherals on the same chip. And uh, you can make use of the scared, scarce rather wired interrupts that are on the chip. But you have some disadvantages as well. Not having such a standard interface, you end up with less um, community support, obviously, for the software. So what, I, what we are considering and looking at is the idea of using the TDIS protocol from PCIe outside of PCIe, extending it to cover these on-chip SOC peripherals, these platform devices, if you like. And if you look at it at a, at a fairly high level, you have a lot of very similar components. A lot of on-chip systems have got some firmware controller that manages the, the rest of the subsystem. You can partition these subsystems in much the same way as you do virtual functions on a PCIe device. You have to have some sort of um, TEE uh, security manager, some sort of TSM to do the isolation of confidential VMs on the CPU. And you can have some sort of device security manager, which may be inside the peripheral or may be somewhere else on the SOC that can perform the same functions to, to isolate those partitions for you and to assign them. What you don't need, you may not need SPDM between the TSM and the DSM because you might have a secure channel on the SOC for doing that. You might be confident that you're talking to the right endpoints, so you might not need a certificate. You also won't need IDE because you can use some on-chip access control architecture to protect the confidentiality and integrity of those paths. Also, if you look at the flows, they can be very similar as well. The, the, you could replicate the, the flow for the um, PCI TDIPs with an SOC peripheral. You would have the same TSM operations, I believe. You would have the same TDISP protocol messages back and forwards between the TSM and the DSM. Where things would be different is with the, the arguments in those operations and in those messages. So as I said, you might not need to set up an SPDM connection. You probably or almost definitely don't need to manage IDE keys. You may not need a peripheral certificate. You may have a, a certificate or an attestation token for the overall uh, SOC that includes that peripheral. When you get down to uh, having locked the device and, and you're starting for the guest to, to verify and validate that it's got the partition that it wanted, you will get some more information. You won't get the same information coming through. The description of the device is not the same as the description of a PCIe device. And so you will need those arguments to accommodate extra fields for things like extra DMA streams which the guests will need to then validate, just like validating the MMIO ranges for a PCIe device. You would need to validate that you got the DMA streams you wanted, um, you got the interrupts you wanted. You may even need to check that you got um, a collection of interdependent peripherals that you wanted. You may get them one at a time, but you want to have the whole collection. But I think um, you know, from at least this high level view, it looks like that's a feasible idea. Uh, and so what I really wanted to do at this conference, and I, I don't think we will have enough time to do it 
now, but in the hallway afterwards, I'd be very interested to talk to people to get feedback on you know, whether this looks like a viable approach and what would be the best way to take it forward, both at the, the Linux guest and host interface side, as well as at this TDIS protocol, which is a, a PCIe protocol now, um, how would be best to, to carry that forward and, and sort of ensure against further changes in the PCIe spec that will doubtless come as well. So thanks very much. I hope I've kept to the eight minutes. So um, T TDISP happens to be part of the uh, PCIe spec, but as we discussed, it, 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 there's almost no PCIe dependencies uh, from, from a TDISP perspective. So there's no reason why you, you wouldn't be able to implement TDISP uh, uh, on non-PCIe devices. I mean, you know, but the, the, I think you still depend on having an SPDM um, uh, or, or measurements uh, uh, exposed to the uh, to user space, right? Uh, yes, in fact, one of the TDISP, the, there are not enough TDISP messages to find to get the measurements. You have to use an SPDM yes, you have message to, to get the measurements. Exactly. But um, if you've got a secure connection, you may not to, you may not need to set up an SPDM connection to to send that message. Yeah. So so would it would it make sense to look at the at, uh, the SPDM patches and make them or think about not making them PCIe specific? I, I understand you don't need SPDM, but, I, but what I mean is that having the same interface, regardless of, of a device of a, of device being a PCIe and plus SPDM, whatever, uh, or a, a, an integrated device like this one, it, might, it, may, it would have a uniform ABI. It, yeah, even though you don't need SPDM, but it might still be useful to be able to authenticate the device because the device might have its own independent firmware and things like that. Yeah. Just take key pretend, pretend it's, uh -huh. it's So basically, I guess what you're saying, you, you, you still can use authenticated key exchange, so authenticated parts of SPDM, and then just take for measurements and don't use secure session part of SPDM because SPDM allows to stop before secure session. You, you may not even need the authentication. So, so the, my very first thought when I saw, saw the, the initial slides was like, why don't you just make your SOC expose these devices as PCI Express? And I just want to confirm my understanding of why. Because at, at the end of the day, like, it doesn't cost a lot to just put a couple of IP blocks in that effectively give you config space and you fake a few devices, right? The main that, that rationale for this... The platform. It can be... Yeah, there are some very low-cost platforms where that, that extra cost is, is relevant. I guess we are at time. All right.